Oh, welcome to another free e-learning tutorial from dacanane.com. Today's tutorial is all about TitanPad. TitanPad is a tool that has been around for a long time. It is simple to use, requires no logon, and allows multiple users to work on the same document at the same time. Furthermore, each individual's input to the document is highlighted in a different colour, and the evolution of the document can be played back as a movie. In short, this is an ideal collaborative writing tool for the classroom. So, let's get into it. To create a TitanPad document, all I have to do is to type in the TitanPad URL, followed by a forward slash, and then I can write any text I like, and hit the enter button. If the URL is unique, TitanPad offers to create the pad page for me with that URL, a useful feature that enables simple URLs to be shared with students. With no logon requirement, this feature of the tool, being able to make my own URLs right at the start of the process, is a winning feature. I usually make these URLs I create direct links from the class blog or wiki, but more on this later. This is the basic TitanPad layout. You can see that I have my URL in the address bar, and you can also see in the top right of the screen my name. If I were collaborating with others on this document, their names and a coloured square would be in the white space below. I can change the colour of my highlighted text by clicking on the square and selecting my desired colour. Now, as I type in the document, all of my entries will be highlighted in green. Students can find collaborating on a document like this, without a structured layout, challenging, until they work out their own method of working. So in the first instance, I like to provide them with a template to work on. The template identifies where each contributor should start to write their own content, and this minimises the inherent overwriting issues that students encounter as they begin to learn to collaborate in a virtual space. The students quickly find the chat bar at the left-hand side of the screen, and they need no encouragement to use it. To upload a template to a Titan pad, all I have to do is to click on the Import Export button on the top right of the toolbar. The drop-down screen has a Browse button on the left-hand side, and I use that to browse to a previously created document that will scaffold the students through my activity. Once located, the document is uploaded and converted into the TitanPad format. Any text formatting that you may have put into your original document will be removed, so don't bother to create a template with anything other than basic text and layout. Please note that any text you may have already placed in a TitanPad, as I have done, will be overwritten when any document is uploaded to the TitanPad. Creating a template has a twofold purpose in the classroom. First, I can write the instructions for the task so that students know what they have to do and can be independent. And secondly, by designing who will write where on a page creates the initial hard space to enable students to add content and not have their work overwritten. It takes time for students to get used to having their work edited by others, so a template helps introduce them to the process and the concept. Once the students start writing, they get a great delight in seeing text from the others appear at the same time. As the other content appears, this new content can then be used by the students to scaffold their own ideas. It is therefore important that the task set by the teacher makes full use of this collaborative capability of TitanPad. Over time, the students get used to the space not being exclusively for them and can be introduced to the concept of live edits of their own work by others, with the content added identified by colour. But as I said, this concept of shared knowledge building does take some shift on behalf of the students. I encourage my students when working in TitanPad to regularly click on the Saved Revisions button. In so doing, it allows students to recover content quickly should disaster strike and the entire page is either wiped by accident or through malice. Using the time slider feature is not only a good tool for students to evaluate how they have revised, added and edited their work, it is also a great formative assessment tool for teachers to collect the same data, but also to see who contributed to the document, how often and to what purpose. The stars on the timeline indicate when, by whom and how often the Saved Revisions button has been pressed in the creation of the document. To make the Titan Pad page easy to find, I recommend creating the page in advance of a lesson and then using the Titan Pad URL to create a link from a known resource such as a blog or a wiki. That way, there will be a permanent link to the resource and the students can find it easily in the future. I also recommend that the URL of the TitanPad itself is copied and pasted into the actual document. 
The reason for this is that the document can then be downloaded by clicking on the import export button and saved as a Word or a PDF document and the embedded URL provides a link back to the source material. Well, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you can see that TitanPad is a tool that is simple but powerful and great for collaboration in your classroom. Once again, thanks for watching this tutorial and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more e-learning tutorials and don't forget to let your colleagues know. These tutorials are for sharing, so please do. Until my next tutorial hits your feeds, keep practicing!